Now let's look at the Hebrew text as to how these tribes were described as. The Raphaims is Strong's H7497, and it describes them as giants, an old tribe of giants. The Zuzims, Strong's H2104, describes them as roving creatures of an uncertain origin, inhabitants of an ancient Amman east of the Jordan. So, find it quite strange that you're called human beings roving creatures. But we'll get back to that in a second. Then you have uh, the Emims and Strong's H368 describes the Emims as terrors. Now, when you put this into perspective, kings joined forces to attack three tribes in the land of Canaan known to be giants, roving creatures of an uncertain origin and tribes of terror. And they just so happen to be already in the land God would give Abraham. So before I move on, I just want to mention though that it's quite strange that the very land that we promised to the Hebrews, the Jewish people, the descendants of Abraham, is already inhabited by tribes of giants who are known to be roving creatures full of terror. It may be partly because that someone didn't want Abraham to dwell in that land. And that of course is Satan. So here we are again seeing Satan's attempt to deviate God's will so that the coming Messiah can never be born. If Abraham would never dwell and populate the land of Judea, then Jesus could have never been born in Bethlehem. See the connection? This is again Satan's trying to intervene. And that's why we see in the beginning when uh, the beginning of Abraham's journey to this promised land while these surrounding kings went to war attacking these three vicious tribes. But then men began to multiply on the face of the earth and then God promised Abraham he would be the father of a Hebrew nation and give them the promised land. And this is in Genesis 12. Later all the tribes of Israel was welcomed by Joseph the dreamer into Egypt due to a terrible famine in the land. Genesis 43. And in many pharaohs later Egypt enslaved the Hebrew people. Exodus 1. And who are the gods of the Egyptian people? These deities. These deities, again, we see a half human, half animal deity. One on the left, I believe his name is Anubis, with uh, he's a wolf with a wolf head with a human body, and we have Ra, uh, the sun guy, with a bird head and a human body. They both carry staffs and they both carry the symbol here it's known as the Anak which means life uh, actually I think it means death but anyway that's the significance of it and what do you see here the rope dangling from their waist I just find that so amazing and here we go some more hieroglyphics Egyptian hieroglyphics where we see Ra the sun god who seems to be shooting rays from him to this woman along with these humans worshiping this other deity who's a bird head with a human body notice that both Ra shares this symbol of the sun on his head as the, this woman to the right that has a sun on her head as well and they both carry the Anak symbol that you see and again you see Ra with this rope that falls from his waist. Here you have the Eye of Horus along with this crown on this uh, vulture and another crown on the snake. I believe it means Upper or Lower Egypt. And we see Horus again 
and we see a picture of what seems to be a guitar and hieroglyphic of a snake and oh, what's this? It's a man that seems to be worshiping a five-pointed star. And where have we seen this before? The mist of the fiery stone, which is on Mars. Now see the comparison between the Babylonian gods and the Egyptian gods. Here you see the Babylonian and the Egyptian gods both have bird heads and they both have something in their hands. I'm going to assume that it was supposed to mean life since the Anak is described to be life and I'm guessing that the Anunnaki was to give them this pine cone which I guess they told them it meant life they both share this rope that falls from their waist. They both seem to be part human in one instance and yet part animal in another. And they both share wings as you can see here with the Egyptian woman who has bird wings attached to her hands. And the Anunnaki with four wings. And again just want to mention that that one was a woman as opposed to the ones we've seen before that which way they were men. Now, what power was behind Pharaoh? The Bible makes it clear as to what power is behind Pharaoh and in, in the Egyptians at the time. Exodus says that the, then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When the Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt. They also did the like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard. And he did not heed them as the Lord had said. So here we see that the miracles that Pharaoh was asking Moses to show, Moses showed it with a rod that God had blessed to be able to make a snake. But Pharaoh's magicians and sorcerers enchantments were able to do the same thing which shows you that Satan can supernaturally emulate God's miracles only to get people to think that it's divine from God. But here we see that God overpowered the three serpents because the, the staff that Aaron had ate the snakes that Pharaoh's uh, staffs turned into. So he still, even though Satan can copycat, can emulate, mimic, sound like, duplicate. It can never, ever be as powerful as the, as the Lord God. And you can see this here. Plus, this also shows that the supernatural power behind Pharaoh's sorcery and his magicians and enchantments and wise men is all satanic. It's all satanic. Because the scripture tells us that anything that's supernatural is either going to come from God or it's going to come from Satan. And here we see that the power behind the Egyptian leadership, the Egyptian head of government, is satanic. So, God intervened again to ensure the protection of his chosen people, all securing the Redeemer through the Jewish bloodline. The Bible says, For I would pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I would strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I would execute judgment. I am the Lord. Notice it says, and against all the gods of Egypt. Well, who is the God, who is, who is God referring to in all these gods of Egypt? He's not just talking to stone statues or wood carving. He's talking about the powers, the principalities, the wickedness of the ages in the spiritual host. He's talking about the supernatural leadership of Satan, which are these inscriptions that you see here. These are the gods of Egypt who seem to have come from Babylon. Or did they come from somewhere else? We see that they went from Babylon. Why? Because Abraham was there. 
Ab God takes Abraham and tells him to go to uh, Judea. And then what happens? The, the, promise, the God's chosen people end up going to Egypt. And what do we see there? The same inscriptions. Half human, half animal beings with feathers and wings on their backs. Carrying something to give to a human being. But let's see what the Bible says these creatures really are. They are high-ranking seraphim angels. If you look at the story of Ezekiel chapter 1, it will explain everything. Now it came about in the third forces to attack three tribes in the land of Canaan known to be giants, roving creatures of an uncertain origin, and tribes of terror. And they just so happen to be old tribe of giants. The Zuzims Strong's H2104 describes them as roving creatures of an uncertain origin, inhabitants of an ancient Amman east of the Jordan. So, find it quite strange that you're called human beings roving creatures. But we'll get back to that in a second. Then you have uh, the Emims, and Strong's H368 describes the Emims as terrors. Now, when you put this into a perspective, kings joined. Now, let's look at the Hebrew text as to how these tribes were described as. The Raphaims is Strong's H7497, and it describes them as giants and old.